Hey there, it's Cassie Trask and welcome back for another scrapbookpal.com video. Today we're going to be making a tri-fold scene card using the Avery L Camping Critters stamps and dice. And this is what that stamp set looks like. Is that not adorable? And then there are our matching dies. And then we're also going to pair that up with some Tim Holtz Distress wood grain cardstock along with a couple other pieces of cardstock and plenty of Copics. So let's get started uh, ink blending our Distress wood grain cardstock. I have some Distress inks in the color Brushed Corduroy and Frayed Burlap. I'm starting with our Brushed Corduroy and I'm just going to use a mini ink blending tool and I'll blend that all over the center. I'll eventually get to the rest of it. Uh, and I know it looks a little splotchy right now, but it'll all even out. So that is the nice thing about Distress inks. If you just kind of keep working them, they typically will blend themselves out a little bit and uh, also using the right paper helps. So these papers, this Tim Holtz Distress Wood Grain cardstock is designed to work with the Distress inks and Distress Oxide inks and any other Distress products that are out there on the market. And so these work really well together. Next we'll bring in some frayed burlap and I'm going to focus mostly on the edges. I just want to add a little bit of variation in color and that'll kind of frame it up a little bit more uh, because we definitely have more plans for this panel. So I'll just keep working that all around the edges until I am happy with the blend that we have. And then next I'll just take a paintbrush with a little bit of water on it and just splatter that all over that background because I, remember this is distressed paper. And then I'll wipe that up and kind of let that dry with my heat tool a little bit before we move on to the next step. I've got two pieces of cardstock. These were cut down to four or five and a half inches by eight and a half inches, and they are being scored at four and a quarter inches. So you will need two for this trifold. And then once those are done, I'm going to kind of take a look at how they fit together because you're just going to fit them together kind of like that. And then you'll notice that they won't fit together perfectly. So what you're going to want to do is bring in a paper cutter of some sort and just trim off a hair from um, one side on each of those pieces. Those will be the pieces that kind of fit together. You kind of work it until you notice that it fits and then that's it. Just two tiny hairs of the cardstock and you'll be ready to start assembling that. I do want to cut a circle through this because I'm going to make a window but in order to do that I want these pieces to be adhered together first. Now that is kind of a risk. Um, just kind of gauge with your die cutting machine how that will work. Mine, it works just fine to put two pieces of cardstock. I don't think I'd want to do too much more than that, but two pieces is just fine. So I glued that together using some Nouveau Deluxe glue, and then I'm going to set that off to the side to dry before I run that through my die cutting machine. I'll get ready to do all of my stamping. I have some Copic Friendly cardstock that I've put into my Mini Misty. I just have scraps of it, and I'm just going to work with the scraps that I have. I'll put a few of those uh, images in there, but I am going to basically stamp up pretty much every image twice. So I'll ink that up with some Memento Tuxedo Black ink, which is perfect for Copic coloring, and I'll stamp that down on one, and then I'll even do it again on another. Like I said, I want plenty of images for my scene, and oftentimes when I'm building scenes, I don't know exactly how many pieces I want, so I just kind of go a little overboard. <laughs> and if nothing else, then you end up with extra pieces for extra cards. Let's do our coloring. I am going to start by putting down a wash of W4 on my little bear. We're going to make him a little black bear. I thought about doing brown, but with all the um, wood that's in the, the that's going to be in the scene, I decided a little black bear would be perfect. And I might go a little overboard with my coloring. I tend to put down that wash, like I said. I like to put down the wash of my lightest color simply because it kind of moistens the paper and it helps with the blending later on. So yes, I am now covering that with my W6, most of that. I'll bring in a little shading on his tummy and then blend that out with my W4 and I'll do that again on his little muzzle. We'll do the same thing and then blend it out. Uh, but again, like I said, I like to put down that wash of color because it just really helps the blending process later. Now I'm coming in with some W8 to deepen his little fur and I don't really have a rhyme or reason. I'm kind of trying to think about just the fact that he'll be sitting in front of a fire. That's really all I'm thinking about. Uh, but I just put the shadowing where I think it will look nice. And then we'll bring in a little RV11 for his ears. The stump he's sitting on, we're going to start with some E57. We'll just slap that color down. And then for our darker shade, we're using the E29. And I'll have all of these listed in the description box. 
as well as on the blog. So if you're interested in seeing pictures, you know, still pictures, this will be on the blog as well. And then for the little part of that stump, we're just going to do E13. For his mug, the coffee will be W10, and then R27 for the coffee mug itself. And if just keep in mind, if you don't have darker shades or your colors are limited, you can always bring in some of your neutrals. Like in this case, I'm bringing in W4 just to kind of add my shadow on the coffee mug. Now I'm going to move on to the tent. We're going to color this green. So we'll start with some YG67. And I do try to think a little bit about my colors as far as, you know, the composition goes. You could just go crazy and add every color out there. But I try to have things that, and I probably think about it too much, I try to add colors that I think wouldn't be too distracting, if that makes sense. So it all kind of goes together. It's all a coherent scene. And um, I, like I said, I did stamp out a couple of the tents, so I'm going to color the other one a little bit different. But for the other critters, they're all colored basically the same way. And we brought in our G28 for our darker shade, and now we're going to have some light coming out of that tent. So we've got Y06. And then our darker shade will be the Y19. And then we'll add that Y19 to other parts. And we'll even color some of the flowers with that as well. Now for our little mouse, we've got W0 for the marshmallows. All of them will be colored the same. And then I color him with W0 just to put down that wash. I'll come in with some W4 and I realize that is a little bit darker. If you didn't have a W3 like I, I do have, you could always use a tip to tip method, which would be to just take your W0, add it to your W4, and then you can blend out that color a little bit better. For our owl, we're going to put down a whole wash of E13, and this was actually just because I wasn't 100% sure what color I wanted him to be entirely. So we've brought in that E13 all over, then we come in with some E99 for his actual feathers, and I end up just coloring that in all the way. Originally that was just going to be my deepest color, but then I thought I would bring in another color blend. And with him and his shading, I'm trying to think about him coming into the fire not coming into the fire, but coming close to the fire as well. So he's going to have a lot more light on the front part of him that's facing the fire. And so um, using the same colors that I've been using, like for the wood and, and such, for his beak we'll use some YR18 and the RV11 for his ear again. Now for our little raccoon, we've put down a whole wash of W3. And that will be mostly his main color. So then I'll bring in some W4 for his shadowing on most of his fur and his tummy. And then for his mask and his paws and the other rings on his tail, we'll bring in some darker shades. So I'm going to bring in some W6. And then once I have that W6 down, we are going to make that a little bit darker in some areas. You don't want to go too crazy dark because then his mask will completely cover his eyes, but we are going to add some shading around his eyes with our W8. And then we'll blend that out again with the W6. <laughs> he turned out so cute. And then for um, the little lantern that he's holding. I'm not going to do a lot of shadowing and shading. I will put down just a flat wash of color for most of the things. So I'll bring in that Y19 and then the Y06 will be the like the essence of the light and then G28 for the lantern. For our fire, we're using again same colors that we've been using, E57, E29 for a little bit of shading and then E13 for the edges of our wood. And then our fire is going to be used or colored with using the same colors that we've been using the whole time as well. You could go a little crazier with shadowing here. I didn't. I should have. Uh, I do a little bit of that with the yellow. Um, but both fires are painted or colored pretty much the same. And when everything has been stamped and colored, we'll get ready to use the matching dye to cut everything out. Now I will have to do this obviously a couple times because I have at least two of every image. In some cases, I have more than two. So we'll have to run that through several times. But I love how those all look with their little white border. And now we're ready to start 
actually doing a little bit more to our scene. I'm going to put the circle die that I plan to use over the center and I will need to do this first because the scene behind it is kind of reliant on where that circle is. So I'll run that through my die cutting machine. You may have to do it a couple times with yours and then we'll be ready to start thinking about how that scene's going to go. I'll put a few things in there just to kind of lay the groundwork for where our ground will be and then I have some post-it tape and I am going to line this up on my glass mat. That'll definitely help. I'm sitting at about two inches and then I'll just put that all across the bottom and I don't want any of that ink to get on the background so I will grab some more of that post-it tape and I will put that on the side just to cover the the back to make sure that that's protected. We'll bring in some of our distress inks again and this first one will be some faded jeans and I'll use my mini ink blending tool and just start blending and again this is going to look fairly splotchy but I honestly don't mind that because this is a scene that is a nighttime scene and a lot of it's actually going to get covered by our pieces. So it doesn't need to be perfect. That's not where the focus is going to be. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that I had some color put down. I do make sure that it's a little bit lighter there in the center where the ground is as well because we are going to have a fire there. And then I'll come in with some chipped sapphire all around the edges, trying not to get too much color on the back side of this piece but I'll just keep blending that out and then I'll even bring in some more of the faded jeans to blend that a little bit better but again it's not perfect and I don't mind and then to really set the scene off I grab some black soot distress ink and this for whatever reason every time you bring this into a nighttime sky it just really sets it and so I'll just do that mostly on the edges and then I'll come in again with my chipped sapphire to blend that out even more. And I just think that looks really great. Again, a little splotchy, but good enough. So I'll peel back my, my post-it tape, and then I'm going to stick it up top. Now my ink wasn't completely dry, so my post-it tape had a little bit of a hard time sticking, but it wasn't enough to make a difference, so I just kind of went with it. And I'll bring in my two green colors. Now these green colors are the Evergreen Bow and Pine Needles. Those are the colors I'm using. So I'll start with my evergreen bow, again, super splotchy. And looking at this from the camera view, it really doesn't look good. But you'll see in the end, everything works out so great. It looks um, just fine. So don't start worrying too much if when you're doing your ink blending, it isn't like perfect, perfect. You, you know, keep in mind this is a scene and so there's gonna be a lot put on top of it as well. Now I'll come in with my pine needles and just kind of go around the edges. And again, that looks really splotchy. And then we'll come in with our evergreen bow to sort of blend that out. But over time, it just kind of makes itself fine. All right, then we'll peel back our post-it tape to see our scene. And I'm happy with that. The horizon line isn't perfect, but again, a lot of pieces will be covering that. I'm going to fold that up and then we're going to grab our um, sparkle dust. I think that's what it's called. It's the sparkle dust by Lawn Fawn. I'll put a little bit of that onto a stamp block and then I'm just going to splatter that all over our background. Now this background isn't watercolor paper by any means so you do want to be careful when you're putting down wet mediums it can crinkle the paper or cause it to pill but I was using fine mists of it and take a look at that it looks like a night sky and or you could say that it's even lightning bugs or whatever the case but it really just adds and it you know I love that look. I'll heat set that and then we'll get ready to start actually assembling the card. We're finally there. So I'll use some more of that Nouveau Deluxe liquid glue and I'm going to put it on the back of the, the panel that had the circle cut through and then we'll add the other one on top of that. And now we have our tri-fold card ready to decorate. And I just love how this looks, so fun. When I've kind of decided how I want all the pieces and keep in mind that did take some time, I just figured I wouldn't show you all of that. And it took a lot of like closing the window to make sure that some of those pieces were gonna show and show nicely. Um, so there is some of that involved. I just didn't show you that. But now we'll just glue all of our little pieces down with the Nouveau Deluxe glue. Closing the window, making sure that it's going to be a cute little scene even with it all closed. And we'll add these little sprigs of grass, which I think that's cute that uh, Avery L has those in their stamp sets typically if it's an outdoor scene. Because then you can just add those little tufts of grass in different places. We're going to have our little owl buddy. He's flying in to roast his marshmallow. 
and then we'll add the moon because you know we need the moon and that's okay that that's not totally showing through we're gonna put a sentiment up there and then we'll add another little piece of grass to kind of cover that horizon that isn't perfect and we'll add some of our little flowers so we've got some little dandelions here since they are out in the woods and then we'll add a, little, a few more little flowers it just really sets the scene all these little pieces are so perfect when you're wanting to do some scene building I don't do a lot of scene building but when when I do it those little elements are what really set it apart all right now I'm gonna grab my sentiments because there are three separate panels we'll be looking at I did grab the three sentiments that come in the stamp set I line those up on my glass mat I have a scrap of black cardstock I'm gonna cover that with a magic powder bag and then we'll pull out our Versamark ink which is just a clear sticky ink and we'll stamp those sentiments right onto that black cardstock we'll cover that with some white embossing powder and then we'll heat set that till those are smooth and melted and you'll be able to tell because they won't be a matte finish anymore now we're ready to trim down our sentiments I'm basically just lining these up in my guillotine trimmer the sentiment just right up with that um, plastic cover that's in there makes lining up those sentiments a lot easier and then for our first sentiment on the outside we're just going to use two little foam squares those are from scrapbook adhesive and we'll peel off our release paper and stick that over the top and this is what I was talking about as far as covering that moon so it's not too you know it's not just sticking out a little bit so we'll cover that moon our sentiment will hang over the top of that I'm using a T ruler to make sure that it's straight and then I do decide I want that little mouse on the outside too so he's like he's coming in to roast his marshmallow as well I don't know maybe we're looking from the inside of the tree <laughs> looking out <laughs> who knows and then I'll put another little sentiment there down there at the bottom and I'm gonna add these little fireflies as well just using a jewel picker along with my Nouveau Deluxe glue and that'll complete our second little scene and then we'll move on to the inside where I add my final sentiment you warm my heart which is just fun and then we'll add the rest of our little elements to the inside of the scene so one or the one tent the raccoon and our little fire and then we'll also add the hearts that I stamped out and colored but we have plenty of pieces left over for another card if we really wanted to so I'll usually just save those with my if I'm not making the card right away I'll save those with my stamp set and it's almost like a little pleasant surprise like oh I have enough pieces to whip up a quick card if I need one and then that's going to finish off our card I love how our little scene came together it was a longer video today but well worth it so if you liked this video please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already done so and as always I will see you very soon in another video bye everybody